This week on Corinne's Pick, Sylvia Sussman. <laughs> pick we have Sylvia Sussman. Sylvia welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Sylvia is known for her beautiful colorful paintings and atmospheric paintings. She deals mainly with paintings basically um, from nature. Um, can you tell us a little bit I mean I, I think you're the, the best person to describe your art. Tell us a little bit about what you do in your art. Well, I'm, I'm a painter and a printmaker, and I mostly use oils, but, but I've used other mediums. And um, I work spontaneously. I don't have an idea before I start. And I draw on my experience with nature and my memories and my feelings about um, various... I express my feelings through images of, in nature, but they're not like um, they're not realistic they're uh, impressionistic or they're um, variations marks that resemble trees or water or, or the horizon um, and when I paint the first marks I put down and first colors I put down lead me to the next ones I, I sometimes have an idea of what I want to do but that's not generally how I work. You know, I want the audience to visualize, um, you know, what you're saying as you're talking. So I'm going to look at the first two images. First of all, the image behind me, I, I want the audience to get a better look at that one. Um, maybe as we talk, you can give the, the name and the dimension. So we'll show two images just so they can get an idea of some of your work. The, that image is um, called Trees and Landscape, and it's done with Sumi ink and uh, a little bit of white acrylic uh, on the ink can create um, shades of um, gray and brown and sometimes even blue. Um, that's two strips of paper, small strips of paper, uh, and totally it's 12 inches by 25 and a half inches. So it's 12 inches high and 25 and a half inches wide. It's two pieces. It's a diptych. And it, the drawing is done with, with twigs, twigs from my apple tree. So is, and, uh, that, so it's done by twigs from your apple tree. Where is that, this painting? What location is it? Oh, it's, you mean, it, it's imaginary. It's oh, just, oh, okay. So can we have the next image, please? Okay, this is a monotype. And that's a, that's a process by which you paint on a copper or um, zinc or plexi plate. Um, and then you run it through the press with moist paper. So it's a, it's a painting medium. It, it's... it's it, the process was created by painters and is used by painters because it's the closest thing to painting in, in the printmaking world. And so you just make these marks on the uh, plate, which is a very thin, like maybe quarter inch or eighth inch um, flat piece of copper or um, it could be zinc or, or plexiglass. You paint on it and then you run it through the press. And you can run it through, yes? And what is the title of this painting? This is called Hummingbird. Okay. And it, it didn't get a title until I saw the image and it reminded me of a hummingbird. So that's why it's called Hummingbird. Um, I didn't know what I was doing until I did it. This is pretty much how I work. And printmaking is really wonderful because 
because it's so spontaneous and you don't really know how it's going to turn out. So sometimes the images are created in the process and those that the process of creating images that you've never d created before can stimulate other work. Like um, my, my printmaking has actually stimulated changes in my painting process. Okay, so how did you, tell us a little bit about um, your biography. How did you start painting? How did you start as an artist? Well, I could never do art in school when I was a kid because I couldn't draw, or I couldn't draw the way I was expected to draw, so I didn't. Um, I would say it started on a train ride when I was six years old from Brooklyn, New York, through Chicago to Was uh, Washington State, um, where my father had gotten a job in the in the, the um, shipbuilding industry for the war, and. Uh, it's those memories of seeing the planes roll by as the train, as I'm looking out the window and I'm six years old on the train and the planes roll by for hours and hours. And it's stuck in my mind for a very long time. And then the first thing I saw when I looked out the window in the, in the little house that we lived in uh, was one of the main mountains up there. I think it was Mount Rainier. And... Um, I thought it was I thought it was walking distance. I said to my father, "Could we go and see the mountain? Could we walk there?" And he laughed and said it was many many miles away. Um, I didn't try painting them. My father bought me a little painting um, um, kit, the wooden a little wooden um, box with little oil paints, and little bottles of turpentine and, and um, oil, and I painted one little painting. And then I gave up. And I didn't paint again until I was living in England, uh, working on doing graduate work in sociology. And I had a friend who was a painter, and she invited me to come to Cornwall with her. And uh, we were sitting on, on the hill, all looking down uh, at the, um, what was the, um, at the bay. It's, it's really the, what do you call it, between France and England, the, the channel. And, um, my friend gave me some oil paints and um, a bit small canvas to work on, and I did a painting there. And then I did some self-portraits back in London in my, in my apartment. And then I didn't do them anymore. Um, I came back to the States, and I was doing some research. And I just thought I would take a summer class at the Art Institute just as a holiday. So I took a painting course, and um, my teacher was Deborah Remington, who's the granddaughter of the famous Remington. And she was very good. I went to the San Francisco Art Institute. She was very good, and she taught me how to mix colors. And um, I started painting, and I felt that I had, it was like a duck finding water for the first time. I just, it just seemed so natural and right for me to paint. And I liked it so much, and I was I was working on a a grant to do a research project on autistic children, and um, I didn't get the money for the grant, so I just decided I would um, stop working on research and uh, go to art school. But I had a job. I was I was on a research project at Kaiser, and so I had a part time job, and I went to the Art Institute three days a week in the afternoon and worked in the mornings. And um, that was after the summer class, I just enrolled at, at the Art Institute just to take painting classes because I didn't need a degree. And I started painting and it's as simple as that. Eventually my teacher said I should get myself a studio and that's what I did. And I've been painting ever since. So you, you obviously come a long way since the Art Institute. Um, I want to give the audience just a quick view of your art on exhibit because later on when we look at you know your larger paintings, I want them to kind of see what they look like um, in, in their setting, in, in exhibit, in, in homes, in, in, in restaurants. So I'm, I'm just going to be quiet for a moment and we can look at some of your, your, your exhibitions. Um, wh where was this exhibition? 
the one, the first one was at the Villa Montalvo in um, uh, down the peninsula, and that one is in my studio. Okay. And that's at the uh, restaurant in the hotel in in the um, Mount um, Gold Country in California, and that's my studio again, and me in the eighties. <laughs> And that's at the Villa Montalvo. I'm photographing my own work. This is at Addison Windows. I, I um, curated an exhibition for five artists, and that's one of my paintings hanging there. And it's it's uh, six foot by five foot. So I noticed that um, in your work, you basically don't stress, you don't stretch the canvases, and you don't frame your work. No, as little as, as I can get away with not framing my work. I prefer to see the edges. Um, the canvas particularly has beautiful edges, raw edges, and you can see the fringe on the edge. And I like it. I like that. I started out doing that because I, I just, my teacher at the Art Institute told me just to put the canvas, big canvas on the wall and start painting because I was painting, a, I was trying to get too many things in a small painting. So I put the large canvas up and I painted it and then I had a friend help me make stretcher bars and I stretched it and it lost, it seemed to me to lose a certain amount of power, a certain amount of strength. The stretcher bars confined it. So I decided to take the stretcher off and not stretch my canvases anymore. So who are some of your influences? I know that, um, you know, I've read a little bit about you. I know that um, and just you know, seeing your work in person, some of it's influenced by Asian art. I know the earlier pieces that I saw in Berkeley, um, I thought were, I think you also said that they were influenced by um, Rothko. So who Absolutely. are some of the, your, the influences in your work? Well, Asian, Asian landscape painting, um, Mark Rothko, and uh, I lived in England for a while when I was studying and I came to love the English watercolorists from the 18th and 19th century and Turner, Turner um, and Constable and more recently I came uh, to love the, the French painter uh, Corot who also painted um, landscape trees and I, I always liked, um, what's his name? Forget the names, but some of the French impressionists. Uh. And it seems like you know, I also get a sense that some of it is also spiritually based because it sounds like the like like in some, your process is to go into a painting and to like let the painting tell you when it's when it's finished. You, you, you're basically, um, it's like a communication between you and your spirit. It, it, it's in a sense, yes. I, I, I draw on my feelings and, um, and when, I, when I start making marks on the canvas or the paper, they say something to me and I respond back. And it, it's, it, it's based on feeling and my sense, my senses. It's kind of like a dance that happens between me and and the and the medium. And I don't always know what I'm doing until I see what I've done, and then that leads me to do something else. So it's a kind of spontaneous interaction between me and and the work as it as it's developing. Um, artists. This kind of de describe it as kind of like channeling information from somewhere else. Um, Sylvia, we're going to go to a break for about two minutes, and then we're going to come back and discuss some more of your images.
Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. <laughs> Welcome back. We were talking to Sylvia Sussman, an artist from Berkeley, California. Um, Sylvia, I want to go to some of your images. Um, perhaps you can, as we look at the images, perhaps you can give us the titles and just explain a little bit about the images. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get to the next image. Okay, that's Antique View. Uh, it's a series of watercolor, um, small watercolors. That's about five inches by five inches almost square, not quite a little taller than it is wide. And it's, um, I haven't done watercolor in a long time, but it, it's, it's layers of thin watercolor paint, one over the other. And it's a way I, I painted for years where I, I, I use the horizon as, as a structural element. And I'd start with the horizon whether it was high or low. And then I would have sky and ground or whatever, uh, something up, up above the horizon, something below the horizon. And, and that would kind of help me to establish um, the content of the painting, the, the, the image. And I did a lot of paintings like that for many years. I painted that way. Okay, next painting, please. Okay, uh, that's uh, called Autumn Marsh, and that's an oil painting um, with many layers of paint on it. In fact, at one point, I had to sand it because I didn't like what I had, and the paint was too hard. Um, so I, it had a hard surface. I used a medium that I didn't like, and it made the surface kind of like, almost like a mirror. So I took... Uh, an electric sander and I sanded it. And you can see, this is particularly the ground, right? not the sky part, but the ground part. You can see that there's a texture there and that's from the sanding. And um, then the color, the, the, the oil paint I use, I, I, I did the coloring and then the, light, the last um, coating on the, on the ground is a translucent gold ochre. And that just made the whole thing, with the texture underneath it, it made the whole thing shimmer. And I was quite excited about that painting. I actually, it actually got sold. It's in some um, high-tech office somewhere in, in New York. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. And that's a six foot by five foot. Okay. That's a painting on paper that's, um, 30 by 22 inches, 30 inches high, and it's oil on paper. And I don't know if you can see it, it has a kind of blue stream running through the middle, but it's a little hard to see on this image. And it's kind of like what you see from an airplane when you look down um, at the landscape. 
with uh, some sea in the, in, in, the, in the background and then the sky above the sea. And you say these, these are imaginary images or this is actually from a real place? It's, it's all imaginary images. I mean, the only real places I've ever been to and seen get mixed up inside me and That's come absolutely out. Absolutely amazing. I, I, I really love that painting. This is one of a series of paintings I did called, called Sand Dunes or uh, uh, Dune Grasses. And um, the, the image comes from an experience I had. Uh, my husband and I had gone to Ireland to visit some friends of his. And um, we were waiting for them to come home. And so it, it, we were in the west of Ireland, uh, just over the sea in, in Sligo. And we were on, on top of a, a big hill looking down at the sea. And uh, I decided to have a walk. And there was a whole area of dune grasses that were taller than me. They were very, very tall. I'd never seen such high grasses. And I walked in this space that was all dune grasses. And you could just almost see the ocean by looking down past the dune grasses, but not quite. And I got very excited about the forms, the lines made by the grasses waving in the wind. And I did a number of paintings um, that relate to that experience. And what I enjoyed so much about it, it was the way that you have to move your hand and your arm to get the, the grasses, the lines of the grasses and get them dancing. And so this is a, a 40 by 26 inch um, oil and paper. This is a acrylic on, on paper. I used acrylics for a while um, when I worked small on paper until I discovered I could use oil on paper. And I did a whole series of palm trees. So are, are these palm trees by the method you, you talked about using sticks? Is that? Um, I, I, I hadn't started using sticks yet, but that's the beginning of getting to the point of using sticks, yes. Okay. Okay, this is um, a triptych. Each piece is six foot by three feet, and it's called Green Time in Three Parts. And it's directly related to the um, poem by Dylan Thomas. Um, I forgot what it's called, but it's about his childhood and being in the, in the, in the, um, in nature, and, and he speaks about the green. And I was just very moved by that poem. I forget what it's called. Um, this is um, red, red marsh with grasses. Uh, one of the things that I do is I've had for many years, I've had a dog or dogs. At that time, I had two dogs. And I would go walking in the mudflats um, near the bay north of here. Uh, where there's a dog park and also a whole nature area that you can walk through. And the colors change throughout the year. And I was a bit imaginative by making it that red. I'd never seen it really that red, but you can see that, that it's a marsh and there's grasses and ground and some water, there are ponds in the, in the marsh. It's, a, it's, it's now become a... Um, a nature preserve, so birds go there and they don't let dogs off the leash there. It's very beautiful. And oh, that's a small piece too. Um, it's only 12 inches by 16 inches. And this, this is um, oil on paper. And this is 40 inches by 26 inches. And it's called Red Field with Trees. So those are trees at the horizon. I started making that, that, that's, I started doing trees at that point. And I got very interested in trees. And I got, as you'll see, I, I did more and more trees after that. But um, that's got quite a few layers of, of red oil paint. So what is your process in terms of making these paintings? How many hours per day are you actually painting? And I noticed with oil painting, 
it takes a while to dry. So how long does it take to complete one of these paintings? I can complete a painting in a day or it might take several months. Okay. It's I know a, you're using graphite sticks in some of them too. I, uh, I don't think you have any of the ones with the graphite sticks. Okay. All right. If, if, if one comes up, I'll say so. Okay. But I have been using thick graphite sticks, yes. Yeah. And painting into, uh, drawing into white paint, which, which creates a very interesting texture. All right, so next slide. That's a monotype, and that's um, called Grayfield. It's a monotype that's 22 inches by 15 and a quarter. And um, what can I say? I just put paint on the plate, and that's what happened. I was using sticks there. Oh, okay. So in the in the print studio, we have some sticks, and um, some also some Japanese um, bamboo pens that a friend of ours, a Japanese friend of ours, made for us. And so I share the print studio with with Carol Brighton. And uh, so those are the trees up in the distance, and then the, the lines that are made with sticks, and just smushing the paint around until something happens. Okay, so, you know, we have uh, many slides um, that have not been seen yet. Uh, we're going to have to probably do it in a, another episode. Um, okay. We've just about run out of time. Um, I want to thank you. Um, for coming on the show. Um, it was very gracious for you to appear via Skype. Um, if you want to see some more of Sylvia's work, in the credits you'll see her website. Um, do go to sylviaassessment.com. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.